Welcome to episode two of Breaking Down Shield Structure up here in Canada. And today we're going to be talking about shallow reefs and shallow rocks. And we're going to start right now. Shallow rock structure on the shield is probably what everybody thinks about when they think about Canada. Super shallow shoreline, blocky, rocky, deep breaking shores with lots of shallow shelves to find fish casting up tight to just every island looks the same and they all look like they're gonna hold fish. There's just so many ways you guys can tackle this type of fishing. And today we're gonna to try and break down four different examples and hopefully these will help you guys when you come up to Canada on some of our big shield lakes. Okay guys, in our first clip here, this is Eagle Lake. And I'm fishing with my buddy Hunter out of Temple Bay Lodge. We had just left camp, and this is like our third or fourth spot. We're fishing the corner of an island complex. And as you can see here on the whiteboard, so we're like my pointer stick. My uh, laser light didn't show up last time, so I got a little ice rod today. So we're moving down this way with the boat, and we're obviously casting up onto structure. And... The channel is about 12 feet deep, but what we're targeting is this four to five, six foot edge off of these rocks. And there's some rocks that are out of water, some submerged rocks. And in the clip that we're going to play right after this, you'll watch us kind of come around. I cast up into actually this rock here and we move a fish. It comes up, takes a swipe, a quick follow, and then rolls off. And then my next cast, I cast actually past this set of rocks that are submerged about three feet underwater. And as I pull my bucktail past it, the second fish comes out and it's nose down and it end, ends up hitting in the eight as our boat is just positioned off of here. So the key takeaway here for us is that we are looking for these little nooks and crannies in amongst all these rocks. And because there's not a lot of current in this area, these fish are just sitting in here looking out into the main channel and because it's a little bit deeper and there's a lot of boat traffic through there it's going to push the bait fish or push anything to the side so this is just a really classic canadian shield uh, shallow structure and the fish in the video it hits dadson blade with no name and this was the one that it hit and again it's just we're casting and we're trying to cover a lot of water so we're moving pretty quick and we're just trying to pick and pick these little avenues between rocks all the time. And on this day, it was super successful with us. And we got a 46 and a half in the boat. Yeah, he's coming right off the third one. Come in hot, right off of some shallow rocks. Push the head out just a little bit more. Bring the tail out just a little bit, right there. Okay, moving on to example number two. So again, this is Eagle Lake. I'm fishing with Hunter, and I believe it was the same day as the previous fish, if, if I remember correctly. We've moved a little bit further south in the lake, the same general area. And what we're looking at here is a slightly different area, but it breaks down the same. It's an island and it's got shallow structure off of it, just classic Canadian shield, shallow structure with submerged rocks off the point. And there's about a three foot deep reef out from shore and there's a small cabbage bed in between. So what we're looking for here if we don't see fish sitting off of this corner of the island, we're going to look for fish in this transition area between the rock and the weeds and the weeds and the rock. And as we come around, we got the boat positioned around here. I'm casting out the front actually to this reef. And I had earlier in the week seen a pretty big fish come off of this transition line. Hunter was at the back and he's casting a little bit more into the weeds, but still trying to hit that transition area. 
and this fish come at him late. He was able to pick it up in the figure eight. And while it wasn't the bigger fish we've seen earlier in the week, it was just key for us that we are able to see fish consistently in this spot. All summer we went back here and we were seeing fish in a, a bunch of different areas here. So the key takeaway from a spot like this for us is hit your main points, your main targets, but look for those transition areas between rock and weed, weed and rock, and a lot of times you're going to find those fish sitting in those transition areas. And again, that just proved key on that day. Hunter was throwing a double eight spanky bait. This isn't the one, but it, it was very similar. I believe it had more green and some gold in it, which is a color that he uses a lot on Eagle. But it was a double eight. And it just goes to show I was catching the fish a little bit earlier in the evening on that big double ten or double ten. Dadson and then we moved to a different area and he downsized just to try and get a more of a reactionary bite of a bait going by the fish and this one actually picked it up late he ended up getting it in the eight so again it was just a successful trip for us Hey guys, we're back. There's what Hunter just caught this one on. On a spanky. Little spanky bait. And we've been seeing them in the weeds. So we come over to a spot that has weeds and rocks kind of mixed. And I had seen a fish here last weekend. It's actually, there's another big fish here somewhere. We just haven't seen it. This one didn't come in pretty hot, rolled off on Hunter and then come around and smack them right at the back of the boat. It's not a huge one, but it's a hat trick for us for tonight. So we're pretty happy about that. We'll get them out, have a quick look and get a quick pick here. Example number three is Dave and I fishing up on cedar and this is an open water reef. So it's not connected to shore. It's not even really connected with a saddle or anything. It's just a standalone reef that doesn't break the surface. And this again is just classic Canadian shield, shallow water structure. So in this case, it has a couple humps that come up to within a couple feet under the surface. Last year we had low water, so this was totally a hittable reef. And it's an interesting spot because it has a lot of submerged rocks around it. And then it has a couple spots that kind of come up a little bit higher than the surrounding water. So when we target a spot like this, we are always looking for, again, these transition areas. So we're looking for that transition from two down to four feet with some boulders around it. And this is just mid lake out in the middle of nowhere. So there's not really a lot of current or it's not going to see a lot of necessarily wind push unless you're getting wind blowing in on one side or the other. But this night it was nice and calm. So we're looking for these fish to be sitting in these transition zones. And even in between the shallowest part of the reef is a good spot to cast. If you have a spot like this one actually has a little bit of a hollow between it, fish will sit right up in there. So when we attack this, we're trying to hit all of these little transition spots and anywhere there's an inside corner, an outside corner, they're all key. So just mapping these structures out or being able to go there under high skies in the middle of the day on a calm day, you can actually see a lot of this and then you can come back at key times and you can pick it apart. This particular day, we're coming up this side with the boat and we're casting into it. And I cast probably around this transition area here where it goes from like four feet and there's actually about a six foot trough. And then this reef and rock comes up to about four feet and that fish come hot right off of this area, come in hot, hitting the figure eight. But it, again, it just is breaking down these transition areas. It's easy to just drive your boat by and just carpet bomb and hope for the best. But for us, because we know a lot of this structure, we're, we're actually pinpointing where we want to cast. And as you guys fish more and more shield waters, 
it will be easier to pick apart some of these spots using mapping, using site imaging. And once you know every little nook and cranny of a particular rock structure or reef, you can be much more efficient with your casting. And again, this day it worked out really well for us. We put a really nice fish in the boat and... Just like it says on the video, it's kind of like a broken record. It was, again, it was on the Dadson blade with no name with the dangle blade. And this thing was just on fire for me last year. And it shows up in a lot of our videos for good reason. It was just a super productive bait. And it's a super productive style of bait for covering structure like this. Hey guys we're back here we're getting right close to our sunset and our moon set i just dropped one dave dropped a couple we've been just a story of our day it's just not going i just lost one boat side and i just had one hit again the same dadson that's been the story of my year so far again we fixed it it's mangled we got another nice one i don't know if it's going to be an upper 40s but it's a thick heavy fish front to back it's pissed off again It's a thick fish. Example number four is probably the most complex structure that I'm going to show you in this video. But again, this is just classic, super classic Canadian shield type of stuff. And here we have two chunks of mainland that break down the lake into a neck down which you'll see a lot in Canada. It could be an island, it could be mainland. They're all very similar. In this case, we have a lot of current because there's an outflow not far from here. But even without an outflow, most of our lakes have some type of current. They're part of a river system of some type. So you're looking for either where the lake narrows down or again, between two islands, think of it as a saddle. But in this case, this is part of a, an overall river system and it just shallows right up here. We have submerged rocks that are totally hittable. They're probably a foot underwater. The right side, you cannot get between the rock and shore because there's too much submerged rocks. The left side, you can actually get through here on the troller, but there's a lot of submerged rocks. So it's just, it's very shallow. It's, it's like one to three feet around here. This side is super shallow, but we have about a six foot trough that runs down the middle. And because the current is going the direction of the arrow, so the current is actually going this way. In a lot of cases, we would want to come in from this side with the boat, cast up and pull our baits down with the current. But because this is the end of the lake, we have to come in from here with our boat. So in the case of the video, we're going to work the mouth of this outflow and we cast a few times on this side. I think we actually moved a fish and then I cast right into the heart of the trough. And even though casting my baiting, pulling it up current seems a little bit backwards. In this case, that muskie was probably sitting right in the middle of the trough. It's seen my bait go over its head. It chased it down. It went deep under the boat. I actually lose sight of it and Dave's helping me at the back of the boat and then he sees it, it comes around and it hits. So it was really a good day for us. And again, it's key, it's hitting these transition points. As I'm at the front of the boat casting into this trough, Dave's trying to pick each little spot around these rocks to see if there's fish hiding or waiting just out of the current for something to go by. And had we not caught that fish at the, at the entrance, we'd work our way around to the right and if there was nothing there then we would work our way all the way through it in an area like this there's just so much to fish that you almost have to fish all of it in our case because it was already getting later in the evening we caught that fish and then we started to move back towards the landing but on a normal day this is an all fishable area you need to cover all of it this fish here actually hit a swimming dog and actually hit this one here and just prior to that, we were fishing deep structure and it actually could have been on my last video and we were using a Medusa because we we're covering that deep break off an island. We moved the fish, I had it going in the eight and we just couldn't convert. 
when we move to shallow structure like this, while a Medusa straight up the middle here would be a good option, it's a little harder for me to get it into that one to three foot area with a lot of rocks and work a Medusa effectively. So by putting on a shallow swimming dog, I was able to get this in there. And with a fairly quick retrieve, I could keep this high up in the water and just the thump of the tail. It obviously called out a fish and this worked really well that day. We put a really nice fish in the bag. So that's kind of how we break down this current type of structure between either mainland on a lake or think of it as a saddle between an island and mainland. Oh, he's hot on you. Oh, fuck, he just turned off. He, he turned. He, no, he, he turned. He's coming back. He just he went down. Work it slow. Yeah, get down there. He just went deep and turned and hung. Are you still on you? Got him. Why is it fucked up? Okay, hey guys. So we're fishing a shallower chunk of uh, narrows here. So I threw on a shallow swimming dog and this fish come in like ultra hot, rolled off, went deep. I didn't see him. And Dave told me to stick with it because he seen him go under the boat and just hang. So I did what, two or three turns, Dave? Deep, yeah. And, and then he, he come out like a... You told me to go deep, so I did. I couldn't see where he went. I went deep and then I rolled back and he come out of nowhere and he meant business like dave said he pretty much hit second gear coming up and he hit the swimming dog on the outside of the turn we're going to talk baits on shallow structure like this if you're new to shield lakes you definitely want to play safe around all these rocks you don't want to be throwing stuff that's going to go down deep get hung up so dive and rise a lot of times is not the answer even though we will use a lot of it because again we know most of the structure but you're going to want to use stuff that you can quickly explore water but keeps it up in the water column so like obviously top water and this is just a fat bastard this is the probably our most successful one we've caught a lot of fish over the years on this one great way to stay up in the water column it doesn't really teach you a lot about what's under the water where some of the other types of lures if you're going to bang them into the rocks like a, a twitch bait or you know even just using a crankbait and banging rocks you can kind of get a feel for what the rock is like on that type of structure another bait we use a lot of is just the spinner bait this one's by Lubowski and we use these a ton around rocks because they're not that they're full fully snag proof But you don't get snagged up a lot. You can work these quick in the water column um, Here's a real big one from drop time tackle and Again, you can work these quick over the top of rock structure and you don't get hung up like you do with a conventional bucktail in a lot of cases another bait that we use a ton around rocks other than stuff like uh, bulldogs or swimming dogs is the Bondi Royal Orba. And for us, this is almost a bucktail replacement. We can use this like a bucktail, but if you quickly retrieve this, it'll stay up high in the water column like a smaller bucktail, which isn't a terrible choice here, but you just, you want to be careful that you don't let your lures get too deep in the water column around shallow structure like this. Because one, if you don't know it and you get hung up and you have to put your boat in a dangerous position that can just jeopardize a trip pretty quick. Another style of bait that we don't use a ton, but works really well is a glide bait. These will stay up in the water column. You can cover a lot of water quickly and these draw fish out. So even if you don't catch the fish, you're going to see where they were coming from. And that can, be, that can pay dividends down the line. The big takeaway about shallow rock and reef structure on shield lakes is you just really got to play it safe as you get to learn them. Use your electronics, map it out. If you have like an auto chart, map out the edges of it. Put some waypoints so you can stay at least a casting distance back from all the dangerous rocks. And then work your way in to the shallowest areas. You don't want to just go you know, driving right up on a shallow area and then all of a sudden you end up right on top of it. Use lures that are going to be safe around there that you're not going to get hung up on. 
and try and pinpoint all these transition areas like I mentioned in the four examples. So again, like the transition between a deep, a deep water channel and that shallow rock. Anywhere you get those transition areas always seem to be key for us. So for some more shallow structure fishing, check out this video right here where you're gonna watch us catch a couple more on some shallow rock structure. And until next time, 54 Bus is out of here and we'll catch you guys out on the water later.